Good morning, everyone. Please settle in, and we are about to get started. So, thank you so much for making time to attend the second performance summit. It's extremely exciting to see so many familiar faces from the first summit, and also even more exciting to see that there is a growing interest in the event. So, we actually have uh, 25 more people attending, so which is more than 30% increase, which is great. We also have uh, 10 companies, uh, which is three more, which is, again, it's exciting to see this growing interest. And uh, since we're talking about performance, it's uh, useful to think about what exactly uh, we mean. And uh, it's uh, often considered to be something that is uh, you know, can be easily measured. And so we uh, think about performance in terms of speed, in terms of latency, in terms of battery efficiency, uh, and which is why we oftentimes also think about performance mantra in terms of those resources. Um, but there is another interesting way to look at uh, performance, and it's actually directly following from the dictionary definition. and. It describes basically how well something is uh, doing its job. And I think it's a very useful and unique way to look at performance from the user experience point of view. It essentially defines how your product is perceived and it shows how impactful this kind of work is. But this is just a dictionary definition. What about the data? Um, and uh, probably everyone at this point is familiar with some older studies. One of them is from Amazon that showed that uh, every 100 millisecond latency increase leads to 1% uh, uh, drop in revenue, uh, which is a huge motivation for business to work uh, on performance, but there are also more uh, recent studies, and one of them, for example, from Akamai, and they also have a very similar results that basically every time there is an increase in latency, uh, people either bounce, leave the website, or just not convert. Um, what's even more interesting is that uh, as users are getting more accustomed to modern technology, their expectations keep growing. They expect faster, smoother, and more efficient way of interacting with applications and the use cases they have on a, a daily basis. And uh, on this graph, for example, you can see that uh, more than 60% of people uh, think that responsiveness and speed of uh, mobile applications is extremely important. And they also expect applications to usually operate definitely below two seconds. Uh, there is also a study from Google that, again, just shows that people do not like to wait. They want to have a fast and delightful experience. So when we talk about performance, we often talk about different aspects of working with it. Uh, oftentimes it starts with guessing, so we make some hypotheses, then we try things out, then we try to measure the impact of what we've done, and uh, we also want to verify that it actually produced the result we were uh, hoping for. And there is magic, of course. Uh, and in fact, there is a huge amount of magic involved uh, when it comes to performance. And it's not very surprising because, as uh, Arthur Clarke said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable, is indistinguishable from magic. And, well, as software engineers, we probably know very well that we are really good at creating advanced technology, so there is a lot of magic. Um, and it's great. This is something that allows us to uh, provide those experiences uh, that we are hoping for, but it can also lead to surprises. Some of them surprise us. 
And, and a good example is one of the studies from Emery Berger, who is working on um, a lot of science behind performance measurements. And in one of his really good papers uh, on stabilizers, um, he's actually describing some use cases that show that um, we often measure things um, incorrectly. And oftentimes, what we measure is not really representative of what we've done. Like, for example, uh, the layout changes can be completely orthogonal to the changes we make to the uh, algorithm, but can result in performance changes that we would deem uh, statistically significant. Um, so the goal um, of, I guess, the studies and research in this area is to reduce the amount of magic um, by uncovering what's behind and also understanding uh, ways we can make use of all the data uh, we get uh, to make it more useful. And uh, one of the best ways to make um, use of data is, of course, math. And uh, today we are going to uh, touch on some of the uh, unique research elements of infer that allows it to perform static analysis of the code without having to rely on any real world uh, messy details. Like for example, we don't have to deal with the fact that there could be a throttling or branch prediction or there could be some IO effects. All of this uh, goes away if you can lift your abstractions high enough that they are in a mathematics domain. Then we are going to talk about uh, effective pre-production automated regression prevention, which is a worthy way of saying that we don't want regressions to happen. And there is, there are many ways to uh, deal with those regressions, um, and some ways work better than the others. And Peter is going to talk about some of the ways that work best for them. Uh, then one of the biggest black boxes or the magical elements in our uh, software stack is kernel. Um, in fact, I even still remember the days when I thought that compilers do not have any bugs. I always believed that everything that is not my code is bug free. Only I can produce bugs, um, and especially kernel. Like it, there is no way kernel can have any bugs, as, and it always works reliably. It has amazing performance. It takes care of everything for me. And um, Alexei is going to talk about some of the interesting ways uh, the kernel developers themselves make sense of the kernel, and they investigate the issues that occasionally do uh, occur. Then we will transition into the world of uh, another type of magic. It's magic that makes things faster for us without us having to do anything. This is the power that abstractions give us by building on top, by sitting on top of the on the shoulders of the, of the giants. We get the benefit of. Um, uh, the fact that every time there is an improvement in the lower stack we are building on top of, we get those benefits for free. So uh, Mikey is going to talk about the ways they are able to um, uh, optimize uh, binaries deployed to our devices to make sure that the load and the user experience is the best. Continuing. Uh, the magic. Um, uh, Alexander is going to talk about the ways we can <coughs> apply mechanical sympathy to make sure that the things that matter to users the most are the ones that we prioritize and we are able to deliver much better experiences in a much more efficient way just by understanding what application consists of, what is the stack that we are building on, and uh, yeah, it's uh, another great example of how magic can work for us. 
Um, but there are also a lot of challenges in working with uh, uh, low-level implementation details, especially when it comes to um, uh, the platform. Uh, Alexey, when uh, talking about the kernel, is going to talk about how deep we can get. Uh, like basically, there is no limit of how deep we can get uh, in terms of visibility into what's happening in the kernel. Um, but some platforms, like for example in iOS, it's a little bit uh, more challenging to do this. And um, uh, Gunnar is going to uh, present some of the challenges uh, around that. Okay, so now. We've uh, touched a little bit on the ways we can make sure that uh, we use the local signal, we can understand the system we are building on top of, um, but we, we also don't want to make these changes manually all the time. We don't want to run our regression tests um, uh, by hand, and we also definitely do not want to use eyeballing to decide whether there is a regression. So, uh, Anshuman is going to talk about a uh, performance lab that is um, protecting Facebook users from regressions. Then, one of the biggest challenges around building a uh, mobile lab is around noise. Uh, Performance, by its nature, unless we are able to transition into the mathematics world, as I mentioned, and, with, and just rely on tools like Infer uh, to flag the regressions, we have to deal with uh, uh, noise in our systems. There is noise in terms of CPU scheduling. There is I.O. Uh, that is unpredictable. There are lots of caches that are affecting the behavior of our systems all the time. And uh, uh, Hai and Hua Song are going to present the single story of noise uh, where they're going to share their findings in the area of understanding noise, its sources, and ways to tackle it. And obviously, these days, no conference or talk is going to be uh, complete without AI. This is the thing that's going to save us all. And uh, LinkedIn is going to share their, uh, their experience using uh, AI to um, personalize performance for their members. Um, David is going to share, continuing on the LinkedIn uh, train, David is going to talk about the um, um, updates, uh, basically working collaboration with other companies in this case, well, actually it's now at the same company, but collaboration with the uh, different product being um, uh, to make sure that we don't work in isolation. One of the biggest aspects and one of the reasons why we are gathered here is to build a network uh, and understand how we can work together to make sure that our systems are not just black boxes that we work around, but it's something that we can affect. It's something we can work with. And this, the hope is that by the end of the, uh, pr by the, end of the conference, you are going to find some ways you can influence others uh, by sharing your insights and expertise to make them better. Um, Another interesting area is uh, signal boosting, which is basically we don't want to always rely just on our users to understand performance implications of our changes, because sometimes it can be costly. And the cost is not always just about the money, it's also about brand. Uh, delivering experiences that are suboptimal or uh, very unpleasant can result in uh, brand damage, and it's very hard to recover from it. So one of the interesting areas that Xiang Feng was working on is um, using automation and other ways to capture signal before uh, exposing too many users to um, new applications. Uh, Charles is going to talk about some aspects that go beyond performance testing. Um, 
And one of the biggest points in this is dealing with failures. And um, now that we have all this infrastructure and we have shipped our application, we are able to capture a lot of data. And it's important to make sure that this data makes sense to us and it's useful. We shouldn't just capture data uh, because we can. It's all about value we can bring to our customers through this data. And uh, Alex is going to talk about uh, all sorts of interesting ways we can use production data to, to understand performance regressions and make all sorts of other uh, unique um, uh, conclusions from it. And again, the biggest point of this event is networking. Uh, please get to know other people who work on similar domains or even other domains that you can potentially benefit from or you can benefit uh, them. Um, please share your research. Please think about, when you, when you listen to the talks, think about the ways you can collaborate. Uh, what are the problems you face, uh, someone else, uh, else may be facing and maybe provide you with some interesting insight. So we are going to have a fairly packed agenda, uh, which is on the screen, so I'm not going to repeat. Uh, but uh, we are going to have breaks between all the talks. So uh, please uh, try to uh, hold your questions until the end of the talk because talks are going to be uh, recorded. And we also want to make sure that uh, all the amazing material that presenters have is going to be covered. Um, but um, please do ask questions and uh, follow up after the talks. Then we are going to have a long lunch. Again, this is your opportunity to get to know other people uh, and share your insights. Afternoon is going to be as packed, so hopefully everyone is going to find a talk they are most interested in. And then we are going to have another, like the second most important event of the day is happy hour. Again, this is your opportunity to get to know others, understand the challenges they work on, and just think about the ways you can work together. <laughs>